Miller from the Z Hello, this is Matthew Miller from the ZDNet Smartphones and Cell Phones blog. A couple months ago, Microsoft released Windows Mobile 6.5, and I took a look at that on uh, on this Traveler, Pharaoh's Traveler 137, and also on the new HTC Pure from AT&T. I expressed my uh, disappointment in uh, Windows Mobile 6.5, and you know I went into it knowing um, what kind of to expect and I had fairly low expectations. I understood it was a fairly minor update with some back-end stuff and and mainly a focus on touch. However, we didn't see that touch focus very deep. Um, it was one level we'd jump into a bunch of different areas and have uh, and be right back to uh, a 6.1 type experience. So what we have here is this is um, another Pharos Traveler 137 it has been updated to the latest Windows Mobile 6.5.3 which has been uh, RTM'd, released to manufacturers so they will start rolling it out soon and Pharos will roll it out as a free update to owners so that's a good deal. Um, specifically one thing about the Pharos uh, if you saw my review before Pharos and SPB worked together to create a mobile shell that was customized and optimized for the Pharos 137 um, it's still being worked out exactly how you're going to see that in the 6.5.3 update because 6.5.3 adds a lot um, of functionality to it as far as the the today screen that we see here um, and as uh, Pharos may have some kind of a, uh, a deal where they don't have the SBB shell or they have an option to jump back into the uh, Windows Mobile 6.5.3 uh, today screen. So let's just walk through some of my concerns from before, right? Uh, first, let's go to the start, okay? The start looks similar to what we saw on 6.5.0, or maybe it's 0.1, I'm not sure. Uh, this is 6.5.3, let's just be clear there. So back then, we had this grid. It was either a three grid or some manufacturers like HTC had a four wide grid. Um, however, that grid doesn't and still doesn't work in landscape mode. It's a portrait only mode. And all you could do before was tap and hold on one and have one option, move to the top. So you would have to strategically figure out what applications you wanted to appear on the first screen by moving everything to the top. So one of those changes we see here now is we tap and hold and it just appears. We can move it anywhere we want. All right. So now much better we have the option to move anywhere we want and that's good however you still can't throw things into folders um, like you can with uh, Android or Symbian S60 so there's some limitations but at least here you could see uh, let's see one two three four five six seven nine ten, you can put 12 of your favorite applications on this uh, first panel and I imagine most people 12 was probably fine and then you could of course scroll down to the rest of them as you see there okay so good, I like the update of being able to push anywhere, put it anywhere. As you can also see on the bottom, we have kind of redesigned buttons. So we've got this uh, uh, start there, and we've got a lock to go to the lock screen, and we've got an X to exit out of the uh, start menu. Um, so let's go look at lock. Okay, I press lock. Should go to my lock screen. There we go. So the lock screen is the same as what we saw on six on the original six five which I like actually it's pretty functional to me um, you know you can slide right or left and if uh, notifications turn up they show up on the uh, up and down on the scroll so that's nice I'm pleased I was pleased with the lock before and I still like it now we jump into the today screen it's the same as before kind of a sliding panels from 6.1 standard that we saw um, this has not changed much we do see you know the buttons are kind of redesigned at the bottom uh, with kind of offset and things like that. People are still a little concerned. They have questions about some of those uh, button designs. Uh, you still cannot customize the order or hide things that you want to hide on here. Um, however, it is a pretty functional screen that scrolls up and down. And this is a resistive, uh, resistive display. And as you can see, I'm only using my fingertip, not even my fingernail. So Pharos has done a good job with, uh, with targets on this device. It feels almost like a capacitive device with a resistive screen. A new part, okay, speaking of some new things, um, we have a, let's see if it's, oh yeah, so there's the notification bar. I slid down kind of like an Android device, and I'm pretty sure this is a 653 thing. 
not a, not a Pharos customization. So there we go. There's some different notifications. If I slide over, you can see there's some management things. There's the clock, the battery, the volume, uh, wireless connectivity. Uh, I do have alarm, so let's tap the bell. There we go. We've got an alarm that pops up. It's a reminder. And then down at the bottom, I've got some new buttons that I can use. If I tap the first one, dismiss all, snooze, that kind of thing. If I tap this other button here, it jumps back to the top. Look at notification. I see there's some emails. Bounce side to side. I've got seven emails in one, five in another. I can view or dismiss and dismiss and dismiss. There we go. So I like the notifications. You just drop down. You got notifications. You've got managing your profile. Um, I'm not sure what, oh, there we go. Connectivity. So that's a quick, easy way. This is very similar to Android um, to bounce around. Looks like a search bar there. Oh, okay. So that is our um, Zoom. And I don't know if this had this in the first one. So we tap on the Zoom. We get a Zoom to help you see the screen better. And I've got a guy at work that actually um, has eye is eyesight issues. And he may be very happy to see this. I cannot remember that being in the original 6.5. It's been a while since I played with one. I don't have one currently with me, but uh, I have to check that out. So Zoom is nice. Okay. So, now my other big concern, in addition to the start and uh, mainly the start screen and some of the touch issues, was diving down into having more touch functionality. So let's go ahead and jump to uh, jump to the start menu. And I primarily saw this. Oh, let me go back. Let's go to the calendar. So, you know, we could always argue that well, if you dive into settings, and I'll go there in a minute. However, more commonly, an appointment, right? Before, when I went to make a new appointment, now you can see I can enter a subject, enter a location, I can drop down for those two. The big thing was time. Back then, to get to time, I had to have a stylus. Now we see, tap on that, there's a nice drop down that appears. I can scroll up and down very easily. As you can see, this actually is almost, I swear it's a capacitive screen the way it's reacting with no fingernail at all, only fingertip. But as you can see, the time selector is much, much better than it ever was before. And then the nice thing up top here is you jump over to the notes that you want to include and then jump back to the appointment details. So you see a lot of this up on the top where you can jump between uh, different screens. And then down here on the bottom, the buttons are nice and easy to activate, you know, um, cut, copy, paste. Just overall usability improvements. Now let's go ahead and jump to like what I was saying before with settings, right? My, one of my big heartaches was in the system and then regional settings. I always like to change my devices to a 24-hour clock, right? This always required me to pull out a stylus. So as we see here, this is the regional settings. And you can see up top, we can jump between different parts. There's region, there's number, currency, and time, okay? Now if I want to switch it to 24-hour time, I used to tap this. And there we go, touch friendly. I used to have to use a stylus for that. So as I, I I've been diving through all of these settings because usually it's in the settings where you have a bunch of these um, these areas where they re really require you to use a stylus because these are rarely accessed by the common user. However, the geeks like us to like dive into settings, and I found that everything that I've seen on this device does not require a stylus at all. Haven't seen, haven't had to pull out the stylus for a while, and um, it's a good job. I really wish that uh, we would have seen 653 actually launch because I think if uh, we would have seen launch, uh, I guess it was October of 653 rather than the 650 or 651, it uh, would have been a lot better press reaction to Windows Mobile at the time. And understanding it's a minor update, however, touch is fully supported throughout, uh, throughout the device now, whereas before it was not. And, uh, so there you go. That's a walk through 653 on the Pharos Traveler 137. Good job with this one, Microsoft. Um, looking forward to Windows Mobile 7, and uh, this uh, does a good job of getting us there as far as support for uh, touch navigation. And then we've got devices like the um, like the HD2 with a capacitive screen that uh, get us uh, further. And now that it's going to be launching on T-Mobile USA, that's definitely my next uh, Windows Mobile device.